Uh, good afternoon, uh, guys. It's uh, Peter here from Orca Realty. And so uh, you're seeing this video, um, and I guess this is the second edition, which would be to do now a move on inspection. Now we're taping this video in May uh, in the COVID world. Uh, so depending on where, of course, where we're at and when you're watching this video, if we're still uh, in the COVID world, then of course, protect yourself uh, and let your tenant know what will actually happen. Now we have done few move-ins and of course everyone is a little bit uh, apprehensive to do these videos. So I've asked uh, Daniel's partner, uh, roommate uh, to, to help with this move, uh, move out. So we're gonna kind of in a sense mock it. Um, and I just wanted to kind of um, walk you through how I set up a move out inspection. So number one, um, prior to your tenant moving out, there is an email that should go out to the tenant that says, here's our expectations of you as a tenant moving out and what, what we want you to clean and how to prepare, you know, to make sure you have your receipts for cleaning uh, and for carpet cleaning and all those different things. Now there is a, a general email that Holly created that has gone out and has been very successful. So if you don't have the email, of course, please ask Holly. So this email goes out. Now, as for this, uh, as for this COVID clean, uh, as for COVID uh, situation, uh, I tell people that I would prefer to go into the house myself without the people there. Now, uh, that's what I do because I think it's the safest thing. So in this case, I'm calling the tenant and say, listen, hi, I'm going to be doing the move on inspection uh, to keep you safe and myself safe. Here's how I would like this to go. And I give him actually, um, I kind of walk him through over the phone how it's going to be. And then most people appreciate at this time of the, you know, with all the things that are going on. So I would tell them, number one, I'll, uh, of course, do these cleaning things. I'm going to go through the house and I'm going to go and do basically check everything for, as we did in the move out. Uh, and I would like to do that myself. I'll go do, do that. And then if there's anything specific that in a sense I found, then you and I could discuss it. Right. And uh, so um, that's a conversation I do tell them. Uh, and so then, of course, I would meet them at the house. They maybe open the door, they wait outside and I do the move on inspection by myself without any pressure. So actually, I think uh, this is probably even better than if there's a person behind you saying, oh, it was like this or it was like that. And, and because that's currently what normally happens where the tenant says, well, no, he wasn't as clean. And actually, it's way cleaner than it is now, and of course, that's always the conversation. In this case, you're giving yourself a buffer between yourself and the tenant. So tenant, please stay out here. I'm gonna do the move out to keep you safe. And I find that this is way better and easier to do it in on the move in and also on the move out inspections. So uh, so on the move out inspection. So um, I'm, also, I'm gonna have a quick discussion with the tenant now. Um, so she's we're gonna, she's gonna come on here in a, sh in a, in a short while. And this is normally what I tell tenants. So we're gonna videotape that now. So I'm here with uh, Leslie. Um, welcome Leslie, welcome to the video. Uh, so Leslie is moving out of this uh, property here. And so I'm just gonna uh, let it roll as, as if, um, if this is actually happening. Of course, we know that Leslie uh, is helping out with this video. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of cut into uh, this conversation and this is probably the most important part of the move out because I think it sets the tone how you want it to go. Uh, and so, so again, we've sent the email before. Uh, so there's an expectation. There's also an expectation on safety. In this case, I tell Leslie, I said, listen, I'm going to be wearing a mask. If you have a mask, please wear it to protect yourself. And, and, uh, and here we go. Okay. So Leslie, thank you for meeting me here. Um, so just uh, thank you for you know preparing the home. And so as a, as a, the best way to kind of go about this, I think with the COVID world, is um, I'm gonna go in myself. So if, if it's okay with you, just to keep you safe. Uh, I have the move-in inspection that we did a year ago. And of course, I'm just gonna kind of go through the property and check things out. Now, of course, there is, a, there is wear and tear that is allowed under the Residency Tenancy Act. Uh, my job really, uh, you know, is to really look at it and take some pictures, compare the pictures from prior and make a judgment call on if I think there's damage or not. Now, in this case, you, of course, have a right to say, well, this was damaged or this wasn't damaged. And, and there's a, a process involved when it comes to a dispute. Okay. 
Now, uh, at the core of who I am and, and how I've always been doing this for years is uh, I'm a, re a very reasonable person. And so I do understand that you've been living here, you've been taking care of it, you've been paying us rent. And so we, I have a leeway of, of kind of allowing certain things. Uh, so I'm, that's how I'm approaching it from a reasonable uh, standpoint. So I'm gonna go through the property. Now, now, normally I would have you go through, if we weren't in the COVID world here, I would have you go through it and I would kind of go through and, and go through this list and check things off. But because uh, that's not the case, I'm gonna go in myself and I'm gonna go through the property. And then after uh, I go through the property, I'm gonna kind of go and say, okay, listen, you know what? I found these three things, maybe potentially, or maybe nothing, hopefully. Um, and, then, and then you and I will have a discussion on, okay, well, this was like this, or this wasn't like this, or, oh yeah, you know what, I did that. And then, and then after we kind of you know, either decide, do we need to get a quote or not, or no, everything is fine, and we just sign off on this move out inspection, okay? So I'm just gonna go in, and then uh, we'll reassess this after I finish the move out, is that okay? Perfect, there we go, let's do that. So, uh, so I'm inside the property now, and uh, I guess you're looking at is the first uh, page of the condition and inspection report. Uh, now, the most important part of this whole thing is that, of course, um, when the people move in, of course, of course, you are giving a copy of this moving inspection within seven days of the moving in. If you don't, then what will happen is whatever damage I found today, uh, if it goes to arbitration, we will lose. So this is, of course, very important that you send this out, but now they're moving out. And on here, you'll see move out inspection tenants or agent's name. So in this case, if somebody else did the move in, potentially I'm stepping in and I'm doing the move out. So I put my name there, end of tenancy date. And so we'll be putting the today's date and then schedule move out inspection date and time. So I put that in there and also the actual move out inspection date and time. So we put those, if they're the same, then you put that in there and that is on page one, okay? Now, um, I'm going to kind of, I'm not necessarily gonna go through the house, uh, but I'm gonna point out a few things that are damaged uh, that I think if we, were going, if we were doing a real move on inspection, these are the things that I would uh, discuss as, as damage. And so I'm gonna go through this house uh, with you and kind of point out that I think this here's certain things that are damaged in my opinion and um, and really should be addressed okay so uh, let's start with here we're downstairs and the, and then we're just at the entrance so I'm just gonna open this up now of course there uh, there people are living here of course but I, what I'm looking at is damage to the doors if the, if the sliders are working okay I'm also looking at back of the door if there's any any damage per se, any crack windows, I don't see that, okay? Um, and I guess we'll just start on this level. And, uh, da, 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 sorry, let's see where the lights are. Um, so um, I'm just here in the bathroom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check to see if the toilet is working. Uh, of course, I'm checking how many, if there's any lights that are burned out. I'm looking also if there's any cracks in the sink, uh, this, if the stopper is working. Uh, and of course, I'm following the paperwork. So if there's anything that is damaged per se, I'm gonna take my uh, camera and I'm gonna take a picture of it. So here, as an example, there is ceiling damage, okay? So, all right, well, I don't remember that. So I'm gonna take a picture of it. That's one thing that is different than what I remember it. There's also some damage here on the wall. So I'm gonna take a picture of that, okay? Uh, and uh, the rest of the stuff, I look at the flooring to see if there's any, any damage here and also the back of the door. So now there is no door stoppers here. So there could easily be damage to the, to the wall, but there isn't, okay? So those are really, so that's one thing I do need to discuss with Leslie. So let's go to the next room. Okay, so here, let's just have a quick look here. Uh, so we have a tank. Um, I don't, so I'm just kind of looking around for damage. So now in this case, uh, there might be, you know, there you could see that this, there is a dartboard here. So of course a dartboard, that means there's a whole bunch of holes here. Now, if, uh, if Leslie was w moving out, uh, I would make a note that to see if there's actually any holes here, because right here, in my opinion, 
this should be patched and should, this whole wall should be painted. Okay, so that's another damage. So I'm making a note of it in, in the move on inspection. Okay, uh, now there is a, a fridge. It's a second fridge. We'll have a quick look if it's if it's clean. It is. Okay, so this is Daniel. Is it okay if I just kind of keep going? Okay, so uh, so we're we're looking here. The lights is working. Um, again, you can see there's some tacks on the wall. So if if, if someone was moving out, you could see that there is these holes. There's uh, you know there's six holes here. So I'm, I'm confirming it with uh, you know with with my sheet to see if there are any holes in this room. Uh, the rest of the stuff, I guess, is just so we're, what I'm seeing here is pretty much wall damage. So I'm confirming it to the to your sheet. Okay. Uh, again, I'm ch checking the slider if it's working, which it is. Cool. Orca car, orcas. I like the orcas, no doubt. Okay. Let me just take a picture of that. So those holes. So I'm going to con confirm it with uh, the picture and the move in. Okay. There we go. All right, let's head, let's head, head back up. All right, so uh, just going to check out the washer dryer here. And uh, one, thing, one thing that I'm looking for uh, with, with, where the washer dryer is, is that, of course, I'm making sure that it, that it does work. So I'm doing that. Okay. So I'm making a note and, of course, check it to, to, my, to my list. Uh, I don't see any damage per se here um, that kind of sticks out. Uh, the cleanliness, uh, so as an example, I might make a note of it. So if I'm, uh, if I'm, if I'm going to be talking to a tenant about, you know what, this place should be cleaner, I do need to have some proof. In this case, I'm cobwebs. If I see cobwebs, then I'll make a note of it. Uh, I think the main thing is, is bathrooms. The bathrooms and the kitchens really are the most important things that do need to be clean as and now especially now with the covid world we'll need to make sure that houses are prof professionally cleaned and properly cleaned so uh now here um i see in this room we have carpet so i'm looking around to see if there's any stains uh, and that's number one number two i'm also looking at uh is there a receipt has it been professionally cleaned right so um I do see this, so this is something that sticks out right away as something that is out of the out of the ordinary. So is that was it like that originally? Has something been removed? It looks like a safety hazard to me. Okay, so if someone's moving into this property, this is a hazard. So we need to address it. Okay, uh, the rest, you know, I mean, I think you know, of course, I would confirm the holes in the walls uh, with with the move-in inspection. Okay, I'm going to quickly go in here. Uh, I'm going to check out the lights. The lights, uh, uh, okay, there we go. Make sure this is working, it is. All right. Um, so uh, now here, I'm, I'm looking at uh, the wall down here. There's actually a lot of marks here, which uh, I just need to confirm. This was, uh, this was like this when they moved in. Uh, you could see that this is potentially was uh, put in after the fact. So we'll need to just confirm, you know, was that there, was it not there? And, and if it wasn't there, you know, what's the tenant going to do? But because this really should not be like that. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you could see that the tacking on the wall. So if this, you know, there would be a lot of holes that would need to be um, patched. So I will make a, I'm going to take pictures of this. And I'm using this. So when we're discussing with a tenant after the fact, I want to say, you know what? Like, there's holes in the ceilings. You know, these, as an example, these are tough things to to patch because, um, you know, the the this these squares are old. How do you replace this? You cannot patch that. So, um, so I'm taking pictures of all the stuff, and uh, in this case, I'm going to kind of make an assessment. Um, of damage okay the other thing one thing that you do need to know as a property manager you should know your client now every client has a different kind of sense of fairness between themselves and the tenant um, and and so if you have an easygoing landlord uh, that you know has has some leeway uh, when it comes to you know repair and not repair 
you get a quick sense as you've been now managing this you know property for a year you'll know how how they are as people um, and so use that as your guide if your tenant is like or sorry if your landlord is like everything has to be perfect you'll get a sense of it uh, and so then then as you approach the move out inspection uh, then you use that as your guide because in the end you are an agent for the client okay so I'm going upstairs now you can see that there's a, a big gouge here which is definitely not wear and tear so I'm gonna take a picture of that as well over here um, of course there will be some holes here that potentially uh, would be there so I'm taking pictures of those because I'm gonna confirm it with 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 the move in inspection okay It's a beautiful home here. We're lucky to be here. So I'm gonna go in the kitchen because I think it's gonna be the most important, uh, just to kind of get a sense. And uh, so it's a beautiful day, nice and bright day in the North Shore. So uh, first thing when I, I first thing I do see um, is this this uh, mi this microwave installation. So either it was like that when the people moved, you know, when Leslie and Daniel moved in or not. So we're not sure about it, but I'm gonna take a picture because it's not normal in a sense, okay? Uh, the rest of the stuff, you know I mean? I'm, I'm, gonna look, I'm looking at the cleanliness of, of the stove, the fridge, the flooring, uh, and then of course, you know, in the drawers, if, the, if they've been clean, if they've been wiped, um, and, then, and then of course, that nothing has been left behind. So one thing that is important that, you open up every cupboard, have a look at to say, oh wow, did you did you actually just you forgot this rice cooker? Because sometimes there's a cabinet that maybe as people are moving, you want to make sure that um, that everything is out of the house so that it creates less uh, job for you because the tenant could potentially call you and say, hey, I forgot this, and then you have to come back and meet him and all that stuff. So uh, that's the main thing that we're doing here. Um, one thing I'm gonna just point out here: there's some kind of damage there. It looks like maybe there was a cabinet here that got removed uh, and uh, I don't necessarily know if that was bef you know if it was like that prior to them moving in so I'm gonna make a note of it the other thing I'm gonna make a note I'll take a picture of you can see there's a smoke alarm that was removed and so um, it's always that's that's the thing that of course we want to make sure that that is uh, working so we pause there for a second Daniel so we are here in the living room and um, of course I've been communicating with uh, the, the, this tenant and, and the landlord gave permission to have this painted. You could see that it, they really improved on the painting of this wall. Uh, and so the, I think the main important part is to number one as a property manager to know your landlord, uh, their, their expectations, and then of course have a relationship with the tenant. So. I think that if you have a tenant a relationship and if you've been going back and forth over the year, then this move on inspection should actually be uh, very friendly. It shouldn't be combative in a, in, in, in a way, right? You just tell them my job is to do this. And so anyways, I can see they've done this. It looks great, there's a nice room. I don't see any damage per se. One thing that I do check with, with laminate is that if it's, if, it's, if it's falling apart, or not falling apart, but if it's uh, spreading apart and you can see that they've, the, the laminate's good, um, and uh, cleanliness is good. So let's go check out one more room and then we'll go with the paperwork, okay? So we're gonna go have a look at a bedroom here. Beautiful, very organized. Uh, so I am looking at, uh, so I'm checking out the ceiling first to see if there's any damage. You can see there's a little bit of cracking there. So I'm gonna take a picture of it. Uh, I don't think it's, I don't think necessarily think it's damage that someone has caused. I think it's just wear and tear over the years of this kind of paint falling apart. Uh, I'll take a picture of that. Uh, the rest, you know, you would have uh, now, you could see there's some few holes here. There's one hole here, one hole there, and another hole here. So if push came to shove and if there were no holes in this room or on that wall specifically, the tenant would have to paint this. And there's also, you can see there's some holes here as well. So I'm gonna take a picture of him, and I'm gonna I'm going to uh, you know have a look at my move-in inspections to see how many holes were there, and and if if there were no holes here, then I would ask, listen, this needs to be unfortunately patched and painted, okay? Uh, otherwise, you know the flooring is in good shape. I'm gonna go have a quick look at this bathroom. Um, oh, there's a kitty cat here. 
Okay, uh, you can see that, that uh, I'm gonna take a picture of the sink. So if there's gonna be any damage in, in the bathroom, it might be in the sink. You can see there's a stopper that's missing. And I'm gonna check out the lights. So let's have a look and see if there's lights. Is it? Okay, the, both lights are working. Uh, and let's see if we need to redo some caulking. The caulking looks fine. I'll check the toilet to see. So what I'm checking with the toilet to see is um, if, it's cr if, it's, if it's cracked or, and if it's fu functioning, is it working? Uh, and then there's some holes here as well in the window. Uh, in the window, so you can see there's two, two there. So maybe something was hanging here and it's now been removed. So I'm not sure if that's the case. I check with the toilet holders to see if that's, if they're not coming down or if they're, uh, and then I'll double check also nothing was left behind. Now, of course, it's, you know, there's someone living here, but I'll, I'll double check and also to see if, the, if these have been wiped. So to get a really a good sense of cleanliness, I look at the kitchen and the and the bathrooms and and then I'll I'll make an adjustment call to see listen this needs to be more cleaned because you know there's a tenant moving in and we want it to be crystal clear you know because crystal clean COVID clean right so uh, let's go look at the paperwork now okay so we're outside here we're gonna be doing just doing two scenarios here with Leslie and she's uh, she's fantastic for helping us out here in number so thank you for that uh, and uh, and so now. I have walked through the house, uh, so I'm gonna jump into it. So let's say I walk through the house, um, and first of all, thank you for uh, preparing it. Um, there's, I know there's a few issues that I kind of noticed. Um, and so I, I think I've pointed out, uh, there's probably about you know six things that either were damaged um, over and top of wear and tear, in my opinion. Um, and so I think I pointed up to you and, and I'm gonna have to get a probably might get a quote on a couple of them especially in the some cabinets in the kitchen um, and and I think from the cleanliness standpoint um, I think we do need to get a clean up point out some cowwebs uh, some, uh, some 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 things weren't wiped uh, and you know I think you know I, I know there wasn't a professional cleaner that you you know you, you could provide a receipt so I think we do need to get a professional cleaner so now uh, the money that we have, which is your money, which is a security deposit sitting in our trust account, is your money. So you do need to approve of me deducting anything from, from that damage deposit. So um, now, how do you feel as, about us deducting for the cleaning? I disagree. Okay. I, I, I really believe that, uh, just as a general rule, I keep a clean house. Okay. And certainly, when I move out, I take a great deal of pride in okay. scouring out everything, including the cupboards, the inside and out, okay. and the, the, the closets, inside and out. Sure. What you saw today was just day-to-day -day living stuff. But yes. honestly, if there was a move, I, I think you could trust me. Okay. And any of my helpers, if, you know, certainly if you feel after that's all done. Yes. After that's all done, if you feel it needs professional cleaning, I would certainly understand. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so at this point, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, because it's, it, we're not necessarily, you know, doing a full move out. If, if I found that, you know, uh, Leslie said that, I would say, okay, well, okay, well um, Leslie, I appreciate that. And everyone has a, a level of cleanliness, um, you know, that they think is regular or regular, regular cleaning or my own standard of cleanliness. Um, and so, uh, you know, over the years, I've kind of, um, you know, tr tried to keep what is reasonable as a le level of cleanliness. Um, and so, uh, I've, you know, I've had doctors move out of a property that has been impeccable, almost like a, you know, like a surgical, um, you know, cleanliness. And we don't necessarily need that. But there are certain things that I do need to kind of go over with. And as for the, you know, the cabinets in the bathrooms were just needing more cleaning. So if you're okay with it, uh, I, would, I would love to bring uh, two cleaners in here. They'll probably spend two hours. Uh, so two cleaners, they charge $35 an hour. So that'll be $70 per cleaner per hour. So it'll be $140. And I think, you know, would they spend more time here? Probably yes. But I think that seems like a f reasonable amount of money to deduct from the for for and I point out a few things. So are you okay with that? I think that would work. Okay. So that's how I approach the whole cleanliness is using a scale that you know everyone has a different level of cleanliness as an example. So I've had a you know a bachelor you know that has never cleaned. Say hey I clean the place and you're like well I know you clean the place but 
this is not acceptable in some sense, and it's not reasonable to leave it like this. And so, and that's kind of I have the conversation. So that's so let's use that as one example. Okay. So you, uh, now the second example is this. I'm going to go through the damage. Uh, so so let's say I found you know going through the house, I found let's say seven things that were damaged uh, from uh, from the ceiling in the in the in the in the bathroom that was cut. Uh, there was some damage there. There was some uh, some missing uh, door stoppers or not door screen, not door stoppers uh, in in the sink. Uh, there was some wall damage, uh, and then some stuff in the kitchen. So now uh, every owner is a little bit different. I'm going to speak to the owner about this, but I think I will do. I will need to get a quote to get these things repaired. Uh, and uh, but uh, but as a gut instinct, I think we're probably going to need to deduct anywhere from 300. To maybe six hundred dollars from the damage uh, from your damage deposit to, to take care of those things. So uh, if you're okay with it, what I will do is I will get these quotes, uh, and then I will have you uh, either approve them or disapprove. Now, if you do not approve of these damages, here's how this goes: is that if you don't approve of uh, a deduction from your move-out inspection, there is a process in place where we will file um, an arbitration hearing with the uh, with the arbitration of R RTB and we have to do that within 15 days so to, as of 15 days of today you're moving out I need to either make uh, get some quotes have you approve of these deductions or we go to arbitration okay so the clock starts today uh, and we will we'll start off with it um, and uh, my approach has always been I'm reasonable uh, number two I, I don't necessarily want to go to arbitration you know it's a waste of time for you it's a waste, uh, in a sense, uh, I personally think it's also a waste time for us. I think if two pers uh, reasonable people actually are able to uh, meet, then we should be able to, as two adults, be able to agree on something. Uh, so uh, that's kind of what I, how I approach it. Um, and so would you be comfortable if we did deduct it, as an example, $500 from the damage deposit? And oh, then... Absolutely. It was nothing that we weren't planning to fix. Anyway. Okay. We okay. just didn't anticipate moving now. When yes. We did, so whether you do it or we do it, we're paying for it. Regardless. Yes. Yeah. And and as a company, we're not making any money off this. So just so you know, it's not necessarily that, you know, uh, Orca Realty makes a profit out of it. It's in a sense, it's just we're bringing a contractor. He'll fix fix it so that the next people moving in have a you know have a a, a, a clean not a clean place but a, a place that uh, that is presentable in in that in that aspect. So, so thank you. And uh, this concludes our move out uh, inspection video, guys. Um, I know that, uh, Daniel, we're just going to go through the last part, which is the, the last page or last two pages, which is really the most important. Uh, and let's do that now. So we are now looking at uh, page eight of the move out inspection. So prior to me actually going outside uh, to meet with Leslie, I'm going to go, OK, here's a question. Was the home professionally clean? So you make a decision on either yes or no. Cleanliness ranking, was it excellent, good, average, or poor? Make a note of that. Was the carpet professionally clean? Um, if, if Leslie provided um, a receipt, then of course we would you know, make, make a note. And just a cleanliness ranking in, in some of your uh, notes. So that's page eight. And now it's important that you do fill this out so that if it does go to arbitration, that you, your kind of professional opinion is used um, in kind of assessing the tenant and, and, and your evidence is, is used quite a bit, okay? So now you have the page nine. So you have the move-in inspection and you have the move-on uh, inspection. So the move-on inspection is quite important that they, you put in the tenant's name. So in this case, I'll be putting Leslie's name in here uh, and that she, that, that she agrees with their, that this represents the, uh, that Leslie agrees that this report fairly represents the condition and you mark that off, you check it off, okay? Uh, and then in this case, it says, I have given the landlord a copy of a receipt for professional carpet cleaning and dry cleaning. So the, again, yes or no. And I have removed all personal uh, possessions from the residential property. So in this case, the one thing that we didn't do is check the garage and also walk around the property. Uh, I think it's important that you do that uh, because last thing you want is a whole bunch of stuff being left behind. And in turn, then it creates a headache for you. Okay. So now if Leslie has agreed to certain things, then have the tenants uh, under tenant signature, have her sign there and date it. Um, and then uh, prior to you meeting them, you do need to know how much uh, secure deposit is uh, that we're holding. So of course have that written out there. And then um, if she's agreed to it, then you write that in there and then have her initial. So that's on page nine. And then last but not least page, uh, page 10, she signs off on it. 
and then you as a property manager um, sign off on that as well. Now, the one thing that you want to make sure you understand is that as soon as the tenant signs and you sign and then they get a copy, then you know you cannot that the owner cannot come back later and say, hey, I found this, I want you to deduct. So as soon as you sign it and then they sign it, then this is done. So be careful uh, when after you know before you sign it that um, that you don't find something different. Okay. Listen, guys. I hope this helps. We'll discuss it further in our, our seminar. Thank you, and have a great day.